We have rolling now. <laughs> oh, okay. sweet. All right. Oh. Well, uh, welcome to the lighter side of the dark side. It's your weekly freak show here on Renegade Radio. Also Spotify, uh, Stitcher, uh, Apple. We're on everything except uh, iHeartRadio's coming. We oh, got, yeah, we nice. got a, we got, we're on everything. When, yeah, it's a Dark Mark show. I'm Dark Mark, the goth comedian. And to my left, everybody's favorite vegan heavy metal DJ, mm-hmm. Hannah Bach. Hi. Man, you seem a little nervous this week. What's going on? A little nervous? Yeah. Oh, I, just, I don't know. I just, I'm excited. You're usually, so, <laughs> you're usually so excited. Yeah. Like, hi. No, we got some cool guests on tonight. So. Well, I, well I, yeah, I, you just gave a longing look, so that's part of the reason why you're nervous. Somebody, you, it's a Hannah's choice and a Mark's choice because it is. somebody you've been lobbying for for months yeah. to get this guy in the show. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, you know so many rock stars. Mm-hmm. You know so many p- famous people, and yet you've been like, Let's get a comedian on the podcast. I'm like, wow, that's never been done. Let's do that. But this guy, I can see why, because he's got the long hair, heavy metal look that you like. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, I don't know what's going, what's, what the deal is with you two, but we'll find out. That's Ooh, a Brandon Ricardo. Nice. Brandon nice. Ricardo. How's it of, going, everybody? Of the White Trash Comedy Tour of with our friend Liam B. White Trash Comedy Tour. That's right. And other things. Venice uh, Beach. Other things. Uh, yeah, I host, I host a show in Venice. Uh, I've been doing comedy for a couple of years now. I've I yeah. mainly Ryan. I got a bunch of uh, projects going on. We can talk about that later. If we'll, you want, we'll talk about all sorts of things later. And then that's fine. My choice, my friend. I saw you uh, a couple months ago at uh, Lenora Claire's. Yeah, uh-huh. sad and bougie uh, uh, Sunday brunch. Golf. Goth hip hop brunch. Yeah, it's the best. I love it. It's so much fun. And I hadn't seen you in a while. I think I ran yeah. into you at CIA at some point, but I think we performed together at CIA. I know we have. Th- I, we have done yeah. that. Yeah, I think that we performed. Did you do something with Tuesday? I did. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I think so we were I think, on the same show. Yeah, I think we were on the same show. Yeah. yeah. And, and now Tuesday and I have beef, but that, uh, that's on her <laughs> side. Not mine, but. I mean, she hasn't talked to me in like ages. The last time she hit me up was last Halloween, and it was because someone had fallen out of her show that she was doing mm-hmm. in like Long Beach. And she called me like last minute going, hey, can you come perform? And I was like, dude, I just got out of a gig at DC Comics, and I'm on my way to another gig. And like, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to drive all the way out to Long Beach for $10. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's not happening. You yet. actually have paid gigs. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's Dakota the bearded lady that's talking. And uh, <laughs> I, I, li- I, li- I like Tuesday Town. She has beef with me. I don't have beef with her. I so. love Tuesday. I wish that she would still hire me. But at the same time, I can't afford to work for her anymore just because, right. like, I get actual paying gigs now. I know. And the last time I performed for her, she literally, like, Waited until the very end of the show, like when mm-hmm. everybody was clearing out, like we were the last two people because I'm not leaving a show until I get paid. Yeah. And by and the way, that's why I didn't book you on my show because she's got a bigger budget. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to give you a fiver, but that's just that one of those things. And so she goes and she like slips her hand into mine mm-hmm. and like walks away. And I look and she literally handed me like, I don't know, three fives. And I was just like, all right, I'm never doing this show again. Wow. I thought yeah. she was going to like give you a little, little, uh, little. Vial of Coke or something. <laughs> that was. Anyway, before we get started, and by the way, we've been talking outside for a while, and it, yeah. the chemistry is great. This is going to be. I, I who's got the best beard before we get started of the three of us? Uh, I I would have Dakota. to say yeah. Dakota. Dakota. Yeah. Dakota is coming in nice. Dakota's number one. Yeah. You're number two. This is a little scrappy. So I'm <laughs> you, you trim it, and you got I, like I a do. whole. You got a whole thing. Like you trim yeah. it up too. Yeah. I do. I'm I, actually uh, jealous of your beard. My... It's Thank nice. you. It, Thank it, you. It comes in fuller than mine. Like mine just grows down like yeah. this, like one of those snakes on the Fourth of July with those <laughs> like terrible the guy, fireworks. Like, uh, like the guy from Anthrax. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, no, 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 no. I wish it was that cool. No, it yeah. literally just grows like this, like a giant <laughs> chia pet, and then I have this Johnny Depp mustache. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, mine, mine never gets comes like in this the weird, cheeks. Like, yeah, it, it curls down. I get, it's all I get oh, one I, I work, way to wear it. Sorry, I work really hard on keeping my beard looking good. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I shave my sideburns because my side burns go all the way up to my cheekbones but i've got like like wolverine style yeah nice. but like i've got I like do that. i've got like share cheekbones and i want to like show it off you know because yeah. yeah. i'm like i'm like like i got these awesome cheekbones and really? like you do and thank you and so i i like to show off my cheekbones and to just like you know make sure to highlight like as much as possible like i pack on the highlight and everything mm-hmm. and and uh you know i've got hair up here and i'm just like no that get out of the way like move nobody asked for this yeah I was gonna say outside, I'm so your, jealous your highlighter's on point you can't thank really you. see it in this light but yeah it looks great out there thank you anyway we're, you. before we get started we've already got started but <laughs> got a couple sponsors real quick audible you guys are on the road all the time listen to audiobooks yeah. audibletrial.com forward slash dms i'm looking at the camera right now 
So if you're listening on audio, I'm just pointing at you. <laughs> Do you want a free audiobook? Go to audibletrial.com forward slash the MS, whatever you want. There's a book you've been meaning to listen to or read. It's on there. They're whatever you like. You like Stephen King books. Tiffany Haddish came out with an autobiography, if you like that. I know they got a couple great great books on the sideshow. Yeah, yeah. David Spade just came out with a with an autobiography. Yeah. Hi, Bob Newhart has a show on Audible. Mm-hmm. Now they're getting into the show business. Oh, yeah. that's Bob Newhart, who's 92, if I'm not mistaken. Good for him. Interviews some young, fresh talents. <laughs> Like Will Ferrell, Sel- Sarah yeah. Silverman, <laughs> Judd Apatow. But yeah, it's like cool. Real it's young and fresh. Yeah, young, fresh. Yeah. Well, great. compared real to him, yes. So I, mean, like, <laughs> so I love Bob Newhart, and uh, I was listening to that when I went to Vegas, and uh, it's a really good show. So I'm obsessed with Audible. Yeah, so yeah. go to so audibletrial.com forward slash DMS. Free 30-day trial, free book. If you don't like the book, if you're disappointed with the book, or whatever you get, you have Keith Richards' book, Johnny Depp narrates it as Keith Richards, whatever you like. <laughs> but <laughs> that was a big hit a couple of years ago. Now, not so much. But but uh, if you don't like the book, you can exchange it for another book. Yeah. And if you cancel the next day, you keep whatever book you like. Mm-hmm. So audibletrial.com forward slash DMS. Also, uh, do you want to do it? Do Me's Home Cooking. We have Best. Do Me's Home Cooking as a sponsor. 1253 Vine Street, mm-hmm. Hollywood, California. If you're in Hollywood... Tell them what you can. You, you, you got to go eat. there. I mean, they have the Next Max, which is their um, Mexican food, and then you can go next door and you can have burgers and your fake. Pork have you been to Doomy's Home Cooking? I haven't, but I like mm-hmm. really want to. It's the best vegan food you've ever had. I took my parents there. Yeah. I had. Listen to this, shrimp po' boy, Dude. vegan, one hundred percent vegan, delicious. Wait, I show Yum. you the picture. You, mm-hmm. when we went there about a month ago. You had bacon cheese fries, a mm-hmm. Big Mac. This is all vegan. Yeah. We went wow. there. We went to the Mexican restaurant. I've never seen flautas this big. Huge chicken flautas. Amazing. Dude. And you can, if you don't know what you want, if your friends want, want burgers or mm-hmm. po' boys and you want Mexican, you can take food from one restaurant to the other right next door mm-hmm. to each other. So, wait, everything's wow. made out of vegans there, right? It's yes. a vegan yeah. restaurant. It's all vegan. See, I had yeah. vegan nuggets Pulled one pork. time and they were kind of good and then I found out that they weren't actually made out of vegans and that was really See, that just like makes no, me they're, not, they're not made like, out of yeah. vegans. They're that made just, out like, of that just that reminds <laughs> me of like um, I mean, that scene that in the Adam's Family delicious. movie. Yeah. Do you remember the Adam's Family movie? Yes. Um, yeah. Where the little girl comes up and she's just like, bye, my Girl Scout cookies. Or, oh, is your lemonade made out of real lemons? And Wednesday goes, are the cookies made out of real, real Girl, Girl Scouts. Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You slipped that one right by us, Brandon, but no. <laughs> they got Philly cheesesteaks, they got pulled pork sandwiches, 1253 Vine Street. They're going to uh, they got a new restaurant going in 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 Culver City, not so not so far from you. Mm-hmm. If you're in Toronto, they have a Doomy's Home Cook in there. I'm going to be in Toronto in January. Go to, go to Doomy's Home Cook. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and yeah, the friends yeah. that I'm staying with are vegetarian, so I'm sure they're going to the, love the, that. They love it. They yeah. love it. Anyway. That's exciting. So Dakota, the bearded lady. Yes. I was expecting, yeah, I wasn't expecting the beard to be all trimmed and the sideburns, the whole yeah, thing. Yeah. Last time I saw you, I think it was all a full, like, uh, Amish thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the first couple of years that I was growing it out, I didn't really understand, like, beard maintenance. And then mm-hmm. I got, like, connected with the uh, Gentleman's Social Club of Los Angeles. Oh, really? Yeah, they're really awesome guys. They put on a beard competition every August. And um, you were part of that? I am. Um, I have competed three times so far. I've placed once, um, not this past year, but 2017, I placed second in the partial beard category, okay. which was awesome. The theme was 80s. It was really cool. They had wait, the, wait, wait. So what's an 80s beard that you did? Uh, I just sprayed a crap ton of glitter in it. Um, yeah. That I dressed like Cindy Lauper. It was like so much fun. Like yeah. I had like all the crazy jewelry, and I like did like my hair like all big, and like put like purple spray in it and stuff. It was a lot That's of fun. I'm trying to think who in the oh, what some ZZ Top guy mm-hmm. one or. So um, I think of like an no, 80s so beard. the so there's different categories in the yeah. competitions, yeah. and I compete in partial because I shave my sideburns. Right, right, right. Um, so the guy who won in partial that year has a beard that literally like touches the floor, but he like puts all these rubber bands in it, ah, and it looks those. like a it looks like a whip. It's like in it's intense. Yeah. Um, 
and he he like wraps it around his body and stuff yeah. and I'm just like how do you even like live like that I'm like oh my god <laughs> if mine touches my boobs I trim it oh, because I, I can't I, I, handle it I know how he lives like that he's he's whipping somebody with that beard <laughs> <laughs> well then you'd think he'd be a little bit more relaxed when he's backstage at a beard competition oh really was he uh, nervous about it around you um yeah he got kind of weird around me he was like oh well I just don't understand how like a woman could be competing in this category and blah 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 and I was Dude, just like I'm you, sorry bro. women are taking over the world yeah. I day. know right yeah. one wow. beard at a time <laughs> yeah. he's like he's like the one thing we had was beard competitions and now the women are taking over yeah he us. lost to a friend of mine the, uh, two years before my right. friend Corey she's okay. up in um, sorry they are up in Oakland I think is Corey a bearded, bearded lady too or yeah okay yeah and um and so he was like saying, going, I just don't understand. And I was like, well, I'm sorry that your masculine that your masculinity is so fragile that you can't handle the fact that I can grow a beard as good as, if not better, than some of the guys here. And he was just like, well, guys have feelings too. And I was just like, yes. And we've been hearing about it for a millennia. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Right. Well, I'm sorry. Maybe but he, maybe I'm not maybe sorry. he needs to enter a vagina contest. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I mean, but I would beat him in that too. So. I, I'm sure you would. Yeah. Now, uh, I'm sure his <laughs> clit is huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, so you, uh, when did you? Was it like when you hit puberty that you started uh, growing? Because um, I heard horror stories. I read horror stories about you online. You read horror stories about me? About waxing your beard? Oh you God, it was rough. It was so rough. I waxed for like. And your stepfather made you do that? Yeah. Why so... did you shave? I did. I did. After a while, I started shaving. But um, he had talked to his friend who was a hairdresser who told him that if you wax hair, it'll grow back thinner, which is a flat out lie. Yeah. That it's just another myth perpetuated by the beauty industry. And so like there's this this toxic thinking that like hair is inherently bad, which didn't even become a thing until like the 1920s, I want to say. And I mean, people didn't even wear deodorant until the 1920s. So like, you know, everybody was just all hairy and smelly and just like walking around doing their thing. But like, Hot. imagine like those flappers, like, you know, yeah. those like little flapper dresses, they had like arm hair and right. stuff, you know? And so um, he listened to his friend and he believed that and took me to her and had her wax off my beard um, because a friend of his said to him, he went, hey, what's going on with your kid? She's got about as much facial hair as I did in high school. And that stressed him out. And, like, he took me to this woman and had her wax off my beard. And, like, I just, like, went down this, like, shame spiral of, that's like, oh, no, women horrible. don't grow facial hair. And, like, that, it made me feel so bad. That's horrible. Like, as a teenager, you know, like, yeah. I was already the fat girl. I was already the girl who, like, chopped off all of her hair because I was just, like, fuck like everything sorry can i swear yeah oh, okay cool all right cool yeah, we, 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 we like... encourage profanity actually. <laughs> we do yeah. okay cool people I was like, just like profanity <laughs> i just wasn't sure because you know i've done like reality tv and stuff and if yeah. i say fuck then they're just like all right well we have to do that entire thing over because it's it has to be real but you really can't swear and i'm just like ah so fucking swear so go ahead yeah okay so i was just you know i was like the kid who like chopped off all of her hair and was just like fuck everything like i'm gonna just like do whatever i want to do and so wait a second. so you chopped off all your hair and you, yeah. had, you had a beard um so no you like a strong I, man or something i mean or, I, or... I wasn't allowed to look like uh, oh, okay. i wasn't allowed to look like that because i had to wax my face every month yeah, that's ooh, so every they, month too. every month every month oh. i would go and i would wax my face Dude, once this, a month this is fucking horrible yeah. all over a fucking small joke that somebody yeah. said yeah and his insecurity is projected on you yep that's it's it's fuck I mean, we're good now. Uh, you know, I'm, like I'm he's sure. super supportive now because yeah. I sat down with him when I started growing it out, and I said to him, "I was like, hey, look, like, um, I reconnected with a friend of mine who's in sideshow, and mm -hmm. I've decided that I want to grow out my beard, and I want to be the bearded lady, and I want to join the sideshow." And he was just like, "Well, I just don't know how I'm going to feel about you having a beard." And I go, "Well, you know what? At this point in my life." I don't really have to take into consideration how you feel. Like yeah, how this old isn't, were you at this time? Uh, I was 23. Okay. Yeah, right. You're still a baby. 23, buddy. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, look, at this point in my life, I don't have to take in con into consideration like that I want to do this. And I, it's not about your feelings. It's about my feelings. This is nothing against you, but this is how I want to be in my life. I want to join the sideshow. I want to be the bearded lady. I want to make a fucking difference. And he was just like, okay. And it took him a little while to like get used to it and everything. But then like he bought 
bought me this really cool sign. Like my siblings both did 4-H, mm-hmm. um, my younger siblings. And so at Thayer, they have like the he always Wait, gets 4-H them. is like cow stuff, right? Yeah. Okay, uh-huh. all right, all right. My siblings raised pigs, lambs, and goats. Okay. And then all they right. sold them for slaughter. I was raised in Los year. Angeles. I just eat those. Yeah, um, exactly. Exactly. Uh, um, Hannah, Hannah just just made her face. But, <laughs> no, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, I do I do this He got me this cool sign that says don't fuck with the bearded lady. He had it like specially that's, made that's, for that's me and cool. that's like hanging that's up awesome. in my room. Yeah, and your siblings, none of them have I mean, uh, no, no, no. Um, it's not a genetic thing. Um, I actually don't have an official diagnosis. Basically, as close as we ever got was that my adrenal glands right. are messed up. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, and um, I was uh, I had I had a really bad joke on the tip of my tongue or something <laughs> about the carpets matching the drapes, but I, we're going to save that. Because <laughs> um, Hannah, you've been yes. after me to have Brandon on. For weeks. I have. Tell me why. He's funny. Um, you know, I never. <laughs> no, he really is. Like, I. How, I, well, how I, did you guys meet? Tinder. 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 <laughs> really? Totally met on just Tinder. Just a Tinder guy? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And you're always like, I can't meet anybody on yeah, Tinder. Yeah, but we, 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 it's the first time we've met. met. We've just been corresponding. Oh, wait, wait a second. I've been oh, taking okay. my time. I'm a gentleman <laughs> like that, you know? Hannah, you got to tell me. 2018. Tell me we hold out on sex now, too. Okay. <laughs> when did you guys match on Tinder? I mean, but we matched you? on Tinder, what, three, four months ago? Yeah, about that. We've been like corresponding for a minute. We were supposed to get trash last week, but yeah, it, sh- yeah shit happens, you know? It's all good. Yeah. I, I still got trashed. Yeah, I, I still, So when I you guys met did. in the street yeah. outside, that was the first time you actually personally met? Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. funny. No, but you are his. You are her type, absolutely. Yeah, no, no, no. I know. Well, I'm everybody's type. <laughs> you know, <laughs> not my type. You know who loves me is mothers, dude. Mothers absolutely really? love me. Yeah, and, and if you guys are watching this, you can take a good look at me. I am a total scumbag. <laughs> and and <laughs> really, I, I, my, think that, I think that pours out of the audience. My, I, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, this is just a visual. If I said like, that, I'm like, I'm a scumbag. Nobody believes it. You're, I'm a fucking scumbag. I'm a scumbag. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. But I got yeah, that I'm, whiskey gargoyle voice. I'm, I'm a fucking scumbag. The opposite of a germaphobe. I'm a fucking scumbag. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, you know the voice. Yeah, my mom's really worried about the voice. She's like, Brandon, you should see a doctor. And I'm like, Why would I see a doctor? Dude, mom, I am so okay? envious of your voice. I wish I had your voice. <laughs> that voice is so good for comedy. Are you Shit serious? Shit cost me two million Marlboro miles, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's great for radio. It's great for comedy. Yeah. It's great for all of it. Yeah, voice know, over work. I'm Start, I'm starting to learn that, but you know, I'm just I'm 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 putting in the time, man. Right now, right now, I I I, I have a cartoon show, so I I do I do voiceover sure. for the for the cartoon show. But then, uh, like with comedy, it took me a long time to come around to my voice. I really hated my voice right. when I was a kid. I so was what's a, what's a cartoon character? Uh, it's Lush. He's a drunken no. lawn gnome that lives in a trailer park. <laughs> Typecasting. Yeah. yeah. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. I'll typecast myself. Yeah. It means I got a fucking paycheck. You hey, know what man, I'm saying? I'm lush. I'll sell out. That's the yeah. whole fucking point of the term, selling right. out. You mm-hmm. sell out. Right. You make some fucking money. Yeah. So I, I'm going to try to hook this up uh, now that I know that this is the deal. But I, I, I know Hannah's so nervous about what I'm going to say next. But how metal are you? How met? Not, not very metal, metal at all. At all. Uh, that might be, a bad, might be a strike. No, we hate thought, we Metallica. About it. I, I hate, hate Metallica, Metallica too. Okay. Dude, no, no, wait, wait a second. But is this recent Metallica or like? Uh, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I take a, I take a, a, a stance to Metallica the same way I take a stance to the Grateful Dead. Yeah. When I meet a deadhead, they're like, "You like the dead, bro?" And don't get me wrong, I sold ass in high school and love acid. Acid is my favorite <laughs> drug in the world. I fucking hate the dead. If somebody uh, tells me, "Do you like the dead?" I always go, "I like that song, Touch of Gray." And then I watch their fucking heads yeah. explode. That's the pop song. I, yeah. I know. I do the same thing to Metallica fans. I'm always like, "Yeah, Enter Sandman, bro," and like they fucking lose their <laughs> Nothing brain. Nothing else matters. Dude. It rocks. Yeah. Dude, I look, man. Uh, uh, yes, I do like metal man but i like an earlier form of metal okay i i, I was like super into like leonard skinner and i was into black sabbath all right i was I, back I, I was but but then again bro i've been seduced by bands like steely dan dude steely and hall and oats okay i got a friend to this day this day my boy todd gives me shit every time he's always like what do you want to listen to Hollow notes every time, and I'm You're like, I'm like, touch. fuck you, bro. Okay. <laughs> but uh, the thing about the Grateful Dead, I remember when I was, um, I would see the like, album covers, and the album covers were cool. Yeah, they were like yeah. Iron Maiden album covers, mm-hmm. dude, like, like that kind of shit. And then you listen to it, it's like it's bad country. It's yeah. horrible. Yeah, it's horrible. And then I've never seen it live. God 
thank God. Yes. Okay, I'm sure everybody tripping on acid in the fucking field with naked bitches around that are like, just like gang rape me. You know, whatever whatever they do at fucking, and, and you know, I'm sure you don't do that at, at deadhead shows. I'm just teasing right. you motherfuckers, okay? <laughs> Jesus Christ, take a tab and chill the fuck out. <laughs> fucking, no, but like, I just, I just never like, I never got into it. I never went to a show, you know, like I went yeah. to Burning Man once. That shit was cool. Yeah. You know, but I used to go to like raves in the 90s back yeah. when like, when well, ecstasy were double stacked well, mitsus well, and you, well, ha- you fucking hid them in your paint, your extra phone battery. So you had the Jinko spot. jeans and shit like oh, that. Oh fuck yeah, 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 dude! I was deep in the nineties. Now bro. let me let me. Now, is, is it true? Uh, did I read that you were a uh, you're on uh, the show House? I was as a rave bouncer. Yeah, dude, I really <laughs> was. Actually, that's so funny. I was typecasting my first fucking goddamn thing. How'd you get that? Uh, well, I they okay. saw you at the rave or what? All right, no, all right, all right. <laughs> side, side well, note. Let me get the so, tech dummy. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> All right, side note. So uh, when I was like 19 years old, okay, I was working at Johnny Rockets on 3rd Street Promenade. I grew up in Santa Monica, okay? Right. Uh, my family's originally from the Valley, but I, I like, you know, I was like Gabriel Contreras from the original 90210. Like I was <laughs> bussed in from Pacoima. Mm-hmm. How and long that, is that bus ride? It, it was well, actually, no, I wasn't busting. My parents drove me at like five thirty in the morning. I actually listened to Howard Stern every morning on the way to school. And it was like the best memories of my childhood. Tell you the truth, that explains a I, lot. I remember the day when Howard Stern saved that man from the Washington Street Bridge. When oh, okay. He was like, he was like, the guy called him Howard. Yeah. He's like, I'm gonna fucking jump, and Howard was like, chill out, bro, yeah. and talked to him for like seven hours. Yeah. Talk this dude wow. off, dude. It's it's a fucking incredible oh, episode. Cool, yeah. I was wow. like, I was like, twelve years old, maybe fourteen. I don't know. I suck at math, but. <laughs> Still, like, I remember, like, doing it, and it was so funny because the next day he was so full of himself over it. It was so fucking funny. He was like, hey, Robin, you know that song Bette Miller did, Bugging the Wind Beneath My Wings? Mm-hmm. She wrote that about me. That's funny. <laughs> it was pretty fucking funny. I, I thought it was hilarious. I mean, I was 12 years old, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, Howard was a man, and, and whatever. I'm digressing here. Yeah. So I, I grew up in Santa Monica, uh what was I talking about? You, you know, we, were, well, we were getting to how <laughs> you, you, you got on the, show, I, I the TV show house. house. Okay, all right. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. House. So I was living in Santa Monica. I was out of high school. Uh, I hadn't joined the Army because Bush had just become president, and I was like, fuck that. Yeah. At which I really regret. I should have done that. Okay, but still. Really? Yeah, absolutely, man. Like 6,000 people died in both Iraqi wars. You know how many people die every day in America? 6,000. No. America kills the same amount of people that were killed in those right. American soldiers. Either way, you get an education out of it. You get, like, I, I just would have liked to have that bargaining chip, too, in comedy. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I can't talk about the military because I never served. Yeah. But I definitely have viewpoints on it, and I wish I had tortured myself for a couple of years and gotten all the positive stuff that comes along with it just so I could talk shit back. But I know my place. I never served. You okay, know? so if you served... But, but, like, but don't get me wrong. fuck the military. Well, no, 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 no. Fuck restaurants. I served in restaurants, okay, oh, which yeah. is which is the lowliest of all things. At least you got I've to roll that. around in tanks and shoot people. I had to take people's shit. You, you, think, you think Johnny Rockets is bad? Oh, dude. When I was in college, I worked at Denny's. Oh. That's the worst. I, that that is the worst. Oh. I, that is the worst. I would. I. I'm sorry. I've never done that. Johnny Rockles was bad when I was 19. But back to my story. So I was 19 years old. Yeah. And this chick comes in. She had curly blonde hair, and I'm like, and she was a to-go order, which is like free for anybody to grab. Yeah. So I rolled up to her, and I had a buddy who I, I had a buddy before that who was like. Yeah, I moved from here to San Diego to be an actor. And I was like, you can't just be an actor, bro. You got to be in, like, drama class and shit like that. And he was like, no, nah, you can just be an actor. And that got me to thinking. So mm-hmm. I was, like, in college at the time. I was up at Smuck. I was doing my 13th and 14th gra- uh, grade. And uh, I, uh, I started taking some acting classes. And they were fun. You know, mm-hmm. just like the improv class that we had to walk through to get here, right? And and uh, they, except they, yours was fun. They, well, they, <laughs> that was actually fun. I was I was that was I, 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 I wasn't I'm bad. Kidding, I'm kidding. The, she was actually doing a really good job, yeah. and on top of it, they were getting better each time. And right. like, really, they, they were, were giving them good advice. They, yeah. yeah, they were discovering things, and that's yeah. what improv's all about. Right. You know. So okay, back to the whole thing. So I was an actor. Okay, so mm-hmm. basically, Jen Houston was this chick with blonde hair. She came into the thing. I hit on her. She was like, you're fucking cute. Are you an actor? I had done two classes at MCMC. I had no mm-hmm. headshots, photos, nothing of me. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'm an actor, you know? 
She took down, she got my information, hit me up the next day. She brought me in. She was actually the casting director for Martin Scorsese's The Aviator. Wow. wow. And I auditioned for two one-line parts. I still remember the lines to this day. In The was, Aviator? Uh, yeah. It, one was, uh, well, there goes our meal ticket. The other was, welcome to the Flight Academy. That's what I had to do. It was <laughs> that fucking easy. I'd never done an audition in my life. I skateboarded to the audition <laughs> in 96 degree heat, oh. okay? In a pair of Adidas, like, tearaway black, like, old oh. 90s style, <laughs> and a fucking, like, tight ass shirt that said Sublime LBC. Like, <laughs> dude, I, I could not have been. Nothing says Howard Hughes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, a I Sublime had, shirt I and had sweatpants. No yeah. fucking clue. I go in that audition, my legs are fucking shaking. I'm like, scared shitless. I've never done anything like this before in my entire life. She kept that tape. <laughs> I heard nothing from them for seven months. She kept that tape, went back to New York. She had a friend named Christy Thomas who was coming to LA to be a manager. Mm -hmm. And she literally like handed the tape off and was like, find this kid. Here's his number. Find this kid. She came to LA. She like called me up one day. I was fucking broke as a joke. I had gotten I I pulled a full on scarface at, at Johnny Rockets. I was like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool. <laughs> and fuck you, I'm out, you know? Yeah, yeah. And like, like I was dying. They brought me to their office. I kind of just told them my life story and we smoked a bunch of pot together and they like signed <laughs> me on the spot and it's like a star is born. Yeah, you pretty yeah. much pretty, pretty much. Yeah, ex except my voice is way better than Lady Gaga's. <laughs> I know that's a bold statement. I do that on podcasts. So, so then they're like trying yeah. to create controversy, yeah. you know. So then they, they saw the sweatpants and they said uh, he's the he's uh, they, the door guy for at the raid. They they, they uh, I didn't know house went to a no, raid. No, no, but no, okay. no, that, no. So that was that was just how I became an actor. Okay. I, I actually went in and auditioned for that. I nailed that fucking audition to the wall, dude. Nice. I, I went in there and fucking just Boom, hit it. I, I even remember like nope. walking out like I was just like, that's how you do it, motherfucker. No, like, like, <laughs> how, how method did you get though? Were you in ecstasy or what? No, 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 no. I do actually the, the lines were completely different from what I was doing. I right. got brand new lines. I didn't even know I was the door guy. I just did like another audition. I don't even remember what it was. Oh, okay. I really don't. It, that's how that's how it works in the industry. Like it's the audition, though, yeah. you go in and you nailed the audition and they're like, All right, check it out. I know you worked really hard on those like seven lines. <laughs> But here's seven more. You got 20 minutes. Let's right. make it right. happen. You're it's a professional. It. You, you make it. You make do. You yeah. make do. You know. You, you you got the crew going for a certain amount of time. They're gonna shoot you in that time. You make it happen. And what comes out comes out. Well, Dakota knows all about. That. Oh yeah, I know. I uh, I did an art film uh, a couple oh, of no. years ago, and they told me that I was gonna get three pages of lines, and it was all gonna be in one take. It was like this whole monologue that yeah. I had to learn, and it was intense. Mo monologues are rough. So, like, I'm like practicing this thing like crazy. I'm like trying to like read all of this, and like, you know, the director's telling me, he's like, oh, like, I want it to be like really like psychological. I want to get into like philosophy, like, look up philosophy stuff. And I was wait, just like, he wanted you to write it and perform it? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, oh, that's bullshit. No, but that's, so that's what but they so, call an art film, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, so basically, exactly. so basically, I, I get all these lines, and then I, I am like learning about all this philosophy and stuff. I'm like, I bought a thing on Audible. It was like all this like just random like philosophy. And I would just right. like listen to that every night and like learn these lines. And I get there and he's just like, oh yeah, so we're just gonna like cut like most of it. Just keep like these two parts and then say whatever else you want. Well, and I was just yeah, like, yeah, oh. yeah that, that, that's it, yeah. okay. Was, it, it, was this a mumblecore uh, film? Or <laughs> what was, what was it? it was um, GX Jupiter Larson. He okay. does like art films and right. uh, it's just about to come out. On DVD, I think. Oh, yeah, good, yeah, I just got a, I just got a, a text from him a few days ago, just like, "Hey, what's your address? I'm gonna send you a DVD." Oh, that's great. And I was just like, "Oh, awesome, cool." Now, like, now that nobody has a DVD player anymore, yeah. and everybody streams <laughs> movies. Seriously, but thanks. I mean, hell, I stream everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, Why don't you yeah, send me a VHS? Yeah. That'd be yeah, better. Right? Yeah. Why I don't mean, you just download it to yeah. Cody and then yeah. I'll watch it? Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Put it on vinyl. Everybody's uh, going for that now. Uh, so you were at uh, you worked at the Venice Beach uh, freak, uh, freak Show. Yeah, I did. Because your a... friend who encouraged you to grow mm -hmm. your beard. Yeah. She was the uh, what was she? This fire eater. Fire eater. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, her name is Sunshine English, and um, when Todd's daughter decided to step away for a little while. Sunshine took over, and uh, she convinced me to join the freak show. Um, well, she convinced me to grow out my beard, and then I slowly, like, 
incepted my way in and like right. just got started going there just to hang out and like you know they saw like the progress of like my beard growing and finally Todd was like you know yeah was it like the stubble and they're like uh, wait wait a couple months no it was like uh, the first time I went I had shaved the day before but I didn't shave it all that day so this was no when you were really, this like, is the beginning of the embracing yes. yeah this oh, is the so beginning beautiful. of the embracing okay. yeah Dakota so. the peach fuzz girl <laughs> 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 honey I haven't been Dakota the peach fuzz girl since I was 13 Oh, wow. Um, I know she don't have a mustache. It kind of grows a little bit on the ends, and yeah. it's slowly starting to, like, fill in. Kind of and a I'm just snidely sort of like, whiplash. Sort yeah, of thing, yeah, I'm just sort of letting it do, let it do its own thing. I'm like, girl, you do you. I'm just going to, like, support you. Have you shaved the upper lip? Is that what you, do you usually do that or not? Uh, no, I don't. I don't shave the upper lip at all. Okay. all I right. trim it, but I don't shave it. Yeah. Um, I just sort of let it do its own thing, and right. it's slowly starting to, like, creep up towards the middle and, like, turn into a real mustache. So right. I'm just sort of like, all right, you know, take your time. It's fine. Just do whatever you want, sweetie. You're doing great. Right. Like, you don't know Chris Jenner on my mustache. Just, you're doing great, sweetie. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but so I, I went to the freak show, and uh, I met Todd, and I met all of them, and I worked there for about eight months, and it just got to be, like, a really toxic working environment, so I quit. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really toxic working there, and it was yeah, just Yeah, I hear not... the elephants don't like it in the circus <laughs> either, so I don't um, understand. Well, I'm I, not I, even going to get into that right yeah. now, because that is, like, Hannah, a whole other conversation. Hannah, do you want to take that one about the elephants? Yeah, I don't think we can. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we do. I don't think we do. I'm not even going to get into that. Um, but, yeah, working for Todd was just, like, not great. And um, But it was, know, a, it was a start and it was an it encouragement. It was a start. It was encouragement. And, and now, you, uh, now you're now uh, you modeling. You were just yeah. in New York at the uh, uh -huh. at the Fashion Week. That's yeah, awesome. yeah. I did, uh, I did Ashton and Michael's uh, 2018 spring fashion show. Yeah. It was really cool. How did, um, how did that happen? I'm signed with an – with a modeling agency. Okay. Um, it's called Zandwagon. They're right. out of New York. And, you know, they haven't really been reaching out to me much, um, which kind of sucks because, like, I'm under contract. So, like, utilize me. You right. know, like, I'm the fucking bearded lady. Like, fucking utilize me. Mm -hmm. But um, they called me and they were like, hey, look, like, Ashton Michael, like, wants to, like, talk to you. And he wants to, like look at your stuff and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, okay, um, sure. And so then like we started talking about it and then they were like, all right, so basically they want you to come out and do fashion week. And I was just like, okay. So I met him at his LA store and he took all my measurements and everything. And mm -hmm. we talked for a little while. He showed me video from his last uh, walk, his last fashion week, his last show. Right. I'm like, I can't word. <laughs> <laughs> his last show. He showed me stuff from his last show. And he was just like, you know, it's going to be a continuation of this. And like, what colors are you into? Like, from like this palette. And like, what mm -hmm. are you, you know, like, what are you into? And I, we started talking for a while. And, 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 um, and, and, you know, hanging out with you as much as I have, it's basically black on black on black. <laughs> Actually, Which I, I have the I same really, palette because I'm colorblind. I mean, blind. but I, I really like color though yeah. like I do I just don't buy a lot of it because like a lot of plus size stuff doesn't come in like color like mm -hmm. it's like the fashion industry just wants us to wear black and like look thin and like mm -hmm. hide ourselves in the corners and like not exist but right. like the fact of the matter is like the majority of people in America are plus sized right. and you know so it's just like a whole thing but um he actually made this amazing dress for me and it's got like leather and like it's got like hoops on it and i got to keep the dress that oh, I yeah. Yeah. yeah so what was so the reaction door. when you went down the runway um so we didn't end up doing a runway show oh, okay. um we did so what we did was we were like hiding in these like little styrofoam rooms like literally they had these like styrofoam walls like set up on either side of the stage and they like set the stage and it was really pretty and, like, they told us where to go, and then, like, we would, like, pose and, you know, let people take pictures of us and everything, and then we would go and, like, sit down, and, like, that was how we ended up doing it. Um, and I, like, I mean, you've seen me when I'm performing, and, like, yeah. I get into, like, management mode really hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I'm just like, okay, you're up next, and then you're up next, and then you, and then me, and then you, and don't forget your cue, and don't forget to where to stand, and, like, yeah. you know. She's not kidding. I've seen this. No. It's great, though. It's great. I, I do. I do. I'm, like, total mom friend. Um, so, the reaction was pretty interesting. Um, people kind of went crazy, and yeah. I loved it. It was great. I mean, but I've got, like, a crazy ego, so I'm just like, yes. Worship me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Finally, the world knows what I've known all along. Exactly. Exactly. And then uh, come to find out, I'm actually the first bearded lady to ever do Fashion Week. Fucking wow. so nice. I'm gonna Great. be I'm gonna be writing to Guinness and being like, Hey, nice. where's my plaque? 
Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and hopefully not the last. And yeah, I exactly. Yeah. Be there. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I, 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 and part of the reason I brought that up because I thought it was a great story. Yeah. Is uh, this guy's done some modeling? Oh wow! From what I understand. Oh yeah, he Fuck. did. I've seen the photos. Let's have, do tell, <laughs> Hannah. <laughs> Man. Very handsome. <laughs> yeah, but he's like, like he was like a tiger beat looking. I you know, I back have in the worked day. very hard to work against that. Is, okay. is this like the house years? Uh... Uh, this this was it was actually uh, just after the house years. Uh, so when I started acting like out the gate, I booked this like Chevy commercial that was directed by Michael Bay. Oh I my mean, god, I, I'm up I, for a Chevy commercial I, right now. I, yeah, yeah. Th- th- those are fucking great with Dustin. Yeah. Um. I I don't I all I know is I've auditioned for it and they've sent me in and submitted me for it and everything. I'm just all right, all right. To hear from I'm right I'm gonna text my boy Dustin. He does all the Chevy stuff. All right. Sorry, yeah. Dustin. Awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna hit you up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but but still, uh, but he wasn't even the guy who booked me for this. This was like 2006, like way back in the day. <laughs> mm-hmm. Whatever. Was in we, we sh- high. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the commercial for like a fucking second. I'm literally in the back seat of a car and like in Elvis shades and I'm like. Oh, and I look at this car. <laughs> it's so lame. It's so lame. And this was like the- it's so lame, I paid your rent for a year it, and a half. Dude, dude no, no joke. It was 2006. I was before everything went like digital. Yeah. Like when I started acting, couriers would bring your sides to you every day. They didn't even email you shit. Wow. Like, dude, it was, it, you know, this is pre-internet taking over. Like yeah. people were still like, computers, I don't like them things, you know? <laughs> It wasn't. It wasn't Shit, anywhere close to it. Still like that. Well, it was. It, well, yeah. <laughs> so do I. But, <laughs> but like, not like. Okay, so whatever. Uh, I, I out the gate, I kind of like did really well for myself, and then I started like that commercial gig pays. Theatrical gigs only pay you like eight hundred bucks a day when you're SAG, so you get like that. So, I was on house where I shot one day. Yeah, I got paid. Like nine hundred bucks for that one day. Nice. That fucking Chevy commercial. Mm-hmm. I made like eighty grand off of. What? Yo, no, no joke. I was what? twenty. I was like twenty three years old. I was so dumb. I was at Ledoux <laughs> buying bottles. I was like, I'm rich. You know, like right. you know, I, I had. I was so dumb. Literally, my agents were like. Fuck it. This is just the start, baby. Like, go to <laughs> yeah. town. Yeah. Till the fucking Great tax agents. man came Great around agents, and fucking yeah. I owed ten grand. Yeah. But still, uh, th- like that was that was like dope, like right off the bat. But then like theatrical stuff, I didn't really like nail anything. I was or uh, commercial stuff, I wasn't really nailing. I was nailing the theatrical stuff. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I was hurting. Like, I mean, that eighty grand was dope, but I was also like couch surfing at the time in Echo Park, like. Right. Paying nothing for rent, like I was balling, but like I never, I didn't even buy a new car. I had eighty grand. I had like sixty nine thousand dollars. You didn't even buy a Chevy. I I didn't buy a Chevy. (laughs) Sorry, I'm more of a Ford man, but whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Michael Bay can eat my dick. (laughs) Any Michael Bay stories? Uh, uh, Dude, yeah, he's a douche, dude. Like, (laughs) is he really? So literally, all right, all right, all right. So at all, all, right? Okay, so I was basically an extra that Mm. was in a in a commercial. So like a featured extra, uh, basically. But and by the way, if you don't know, Michael Bay is the uh, director of. Such classics as uh, Armageddon, yeah. Bad Boys, Pearl yeah. Harbor, yeah. Transformers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the biggest directors in Hollywood. He's yeah, doing he a, a yeah. Chevy commercial. Yeah, he, he loves fucking Ben Affleck's dick. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So, well, so who doesn't? Uh, I don't. I don't. Okay. Sorry, no, no, sorry, no, sorry. No. sorry. Mm-hmm. I didn't care for Gone Baby either. No. Yeah. At the end of Gone Baby, Gone I was Girl. like, or Gone, Gone Girl. Girl. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Oh my god. The end of that fucking movie, I was like, killer. Yeah. Killer! <laughs> like I was like, just you just dragged me through fucking forty minutes of thinking you're gonna kill her, and then you just you're just like, I'm a bitch. Killer with your, I'm gonna yeah. just do what she says. Killer with your I, dick that everybody hates. I ha- yeah. I haven't been that mad at a movie since Inception. Yeah. Oh, that was horrible. Dude, Inception Ugh. was the worst, dude. Ugh. Dude, and that's all Leo's fault. Well, it's not Leo's fault. He doesn't know any better. He's not a writer. He's an actor. Yeah. But basically, the movie was stuck in post for like two years. Yeah. And they couldn't figure out what the fuck to do with things. It was such a fucking jumble. And in the end, Leo just walked in and was like, 
<laughs> it's all a dream. And like literally, <laughs> that's the biggest cop out when it comes to writing. If mm -hmm. you write anything like, mm -hmm. if at any point you're like, oh, it was all a dream. Looking at you, Roseanne. Uh, <laughs> so you anyway, know what? So Michael I, Bay. I have, love for, Bay. I have love for Roseanne. She fucking, she. Dude, the whole end of that show was terrible. The I, first no, no, one. The no, first I know. Show, then the reboot was and incredible. Then the reboot. And then she like snorted a bunch of Xanax and had to be a fucking like Ambient. racist on yeah. Ambien, yeah. whatever. <laughs> Dude, my Dude. mother used to do Ambien and I like literally, like my stepdad won't let her take it. He fucking literally one day, he came out to her she had like woken up in the middle of the night and just had a frying pan with the heat full on and just like a spatula with nothing in the oh, in the thing no. just oh. he was like he was like he's like all right no more for you no more <laughs> you don't terrible. you don't get to do ambient anymore i've done some fucked up shit on ambient yeah, yeah. oh don't tell hannah one night like i, I like i tripped balls on my am, on ambient when oh my girl, god and me she too. witnessed it. i ordered a bunch of sex toys from amazon like 20 of them <laughs> <laughs> the next day i'm like what the fuck is this cancel 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 and you cancel. also swipe right on this guy yeah. That's I know. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Well, what have like you here. done on Ambien? Um, God. Just mostly hallucinate. Mostly yeah. hallucinate. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I like tried to make my dogs uh, sleep in my room, which they don't like to sleep in my room. So I was just like, no, we need to have a cuddle party. And my dad's just like, no, <laughs> leave the dogs alone. Just go to bed. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're, you're fucked up. Just go to bed. And I'm just like, I just want someone to love me. <laughs> And what did Michael Bay do in Ambien? Yeah, uh, I have no clue. <laughs> All right, so back to my, back to Michael Bay. So, yeah. so we get on set, right? Okay, <laughs> like yeah. this was back in the day before they had featured extras. Before they figured out like they could just pay extras to sit there in the fucking <laughs> thing. They were like, no, these are actual like actors, and that's what Michael Bay likes to do. He likes to spread the wealth, but he's an asshole. Right. So we get to set, and he's like, literally, the DP comes on. He's like this black British dude, and he's like, listen, okay. He might yell at you, okay? <laughs> Don't take it personally. That's just the way he is. And we were just like, this is going to be fucking awesome. <laughs> Five people in that fucking car. I'm sitting bitch in the back seat, yeah. okay? Yeah. With the long hair and the Elvis shades. My hair wasn't this long, though. They, it, right. I actually quit acting because I wanted to grow my hair out. But anyways, <laughs> they wouldn't let me. But uh, like, I like was in the back seat, whatever. We, 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 shoot, the whole, we shoot the whole thing. He's like... I'm thinking you in the middle with the Elvis shades. I want you to do one of these, like just from like the end of the Breakfast Club. Like I was like what? like like Bender, right? right He's right, right, like right. no problem. So I did a thousand different, uh, 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 like every single one for an hour. Oh God. And in the end, he was like, yeah, I just don't think it's going to work. And I was like, you That's, think, bro? That is you so, think, dude? That is so yeah. Stanley yeah. Kubrick. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, they, they, they have to yeah. justify their fucking paychecks. If they're yeah. not being a super yeah. asshole, then they're not worth the money. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I can't yeah. lift my right arm anymore. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, my <laughs> arms, Michael Bay. My arm's fucking fine. I went yeah. home and fucking tugged one out. It was okay. <laughs> and uh, Michael Bay, uh, successful director. Very successful. Tommy Wiseau. Oh boy! My favorite director. Oh, we're going there. We're going there because <laughs> I'm just trying to find out. Like, wait. Hold on, Tommy Wiseau's your favorite. Tommy Wiseau. Yeah, from the room. What, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. I know who he is. I, well, I don't well, pronounce well, his name right. He couldn't pronounce my name right if he tried. Well, well, there, I, well I love. I, I I love shitty movies. So I, I, I watch oh, the room God. religiously. Yeah, I, no, I, do, like, I do too. But, but that to, is the first movie that I watched this year. Like. Uh, I did a show New Year's Eve in San Diego, like crashed on my friend's couch, woke up the next morning and she was just like, hey, you want to watch The Room? And I was just like, fuck yeah, let's had, watch The Room. Have you seen it before? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'd met Tommy several times. Okay. So it's, this is the thing you were telling me outside. <laughs> yeah. That so, apparently Greg <laughs> Okay. So Greg and, I, Greg and I were like talking and like we started talking about, okay, so it was a couple months ago. He was hitting on you as men do. It, he, he, kind of, yeah, he was. Mm -hmm. um, we were like just having a nice conversation I had like run out of the theater we were at the Egyptian I had like run out of the theater like run to go to the bathroom oh it was, it was a room screening yeah it was a room screening okay. yeah and Greg actually showed up for that and okay. I brought my copy of the disaster artist with me because I wanted him to sign it because oh wow I you're a fan yeah. Yeah. yeah okay yeah I've got the disaster artist and then I have the disaster artist on audible Oh. Because Greg reads it, and nice. it sounds like Greg is telling you a story. And That's if you'd awesome. like to get that audience, audibletrial.com yeah. forward slash DMS, it's free. You Go totally ahead. you totally got it. Um, so Greg is like kind of just standing along the side, and Tommy's like off doing his thing over by his merch table. He's talking with his like guys that work for him and everything. And yeah. 
Greg looks up as I'm walking past and he goes, hey, how are you? And I was just like, um, good, how are you? And so I just like stop and we start chatting and we start talking about like modeling and stuff. I had just come back from New York. So I think this was like, I don't know, March, I want to say like sometime in March or something. Mm -hmm. So we're talking and Tommy looks over and he sees us like just chatting. We're just having a nice conversation. And Tommy goes, Greg, come over. Greg, we have to do live stream. Come over here. Tommy's or yeah. Greg is just like, yeah, all right, I'll, I'll be right there. I'll be right there, Tommy. Like, don't worry about it. He's like, no, Greg, come on. We have to do live stream. We have to do live stream right now. The fan wants to see you, Greg. Let's go. Let's do live stream. <laughs> and he's just like, he's like, Tommy, I'll I'll be right there. Like, I'll I'll be there in a minute. It's okay. Like, I'll be there. And he's just like, no, Greg, you can talk to a girl later. We have to do this now. <laughs> and I was just like, and I like look at Greg and I was just like, so it was nice talking to you. And he was just like, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go do a live stream now. I was like, okay, good luck. <laughs> like, but wait a second, you just said that you're the person that when they do a show, you're like trying to corral everybody to get everybody. Oh no, so I um, so, that's when I'm performing. I'm okay. not performing when I'm going to see the room. I'm just like, no, no, no I'm saying Tommy was was doing the same thing. Oh yeah, no, Tommy does the same. Come thing. on, Greg, come on, don't, don't talk to pretty lady. Come Greg, over here, Greg. Yeah. We have to do live yes, stream. Yes. We have to do live stream right now, Greg. The bearded lady's tearing me apart. <laughs> <laughs> but. Wow. I have spent so much money on fucking Tommy Wiseau, though. Like, he can, like, wait five fucking minutes so right. I can talk to Greg Sestero mm-hmm. because, like, I've bought his DVD. I've bought his fucking boxers. I've bought the shirts. Like, I have a bunch of, like, the room, like, stuff, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, he can wait five minutes while I just get to talk to Greg. Like, the one time I've ever met Greg Sestero. And, right. like, he doesn't go to screenings very often. He doesn't do all of that. So he actually came to the Egyptian and, like, introduced it and everything. And he, you know, it was, like, after, I think it was after the Golden Globes, after right. um, that whole thing happened with, um, oh, God, what's his face? James, R- James Franco. James Franco. Yeah. When he ran up and uh, Yeah, when, to, when Tommy, to like, tried to, like, grab the mic and James was just like, no! <laughs> but like I actually got into a fight with like some producer right. in a bar about that because he was just like I think that was so disrespectful and I was just like have you ever met Tommy Yeah. and he was just like no and I was just like have you ever heard Tommy talk and he was just like no and I was just like have you ever been in a room where Tommy's like talking you've never watched like it's a YouTube video good. and I was yeah. just like I was like seriously it is for the good of Tommy Wiseau yeah. it is for the good of James Franco and it is for the good of yep. everybody yep. at the yep. Golden yep. Globes yep. that right. he didn't yep. get a hold of that yep. microphone yep. 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 I was like I 100% understand why James Franco did You think did Kanye's that. bad. Oh, like, my literally, God. like, it, Tom was on the but, uh, but at least you can, well, uh, you can understand insult. that. <laughs> yeah, you can understand Kanye, Tommy. Uh, hey, have you like, had mm-hmm. other celebrities uh, hit on you, let's say? Um, yes. None <laughs> yes, that you're going to talk about on air? <laughs> um, it was pre beard. I don't, I haven't really, like, I had too many celebrities hit on me like with the beard that I've really noticed really? but like pre-beard um I've definitely had celebrities like hitting on me. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, but I mean your, your your dating life is I uh, I mean I don't really date. Really? Yeah, um So I know uh, you you've been in a relationship and I know you yeah. you rent men and, and women. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, oh. yeah. Uh-huh. I'm pansexual. Yeah. Um yeah, I've dated men and women. I don't really care what a person's gender is so long as they're like a good person. Right. Like that's the only thing that matters to me is that a person's a good person and that they're interesting and that they're funny and that I can get along with them and that they understand that I'm into some like serious nerd shit. So like yeah. Nerd shit, really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm like huge in like all the Marvel movies. Like I got well, that's, into That's not even that's nerd. Not I was going to be like no, what level like, dungeon master are you? I want to <laughs> play Dungeons and Dragons I, you know what? I so do, I fucking do, I bad. Do, I do. Too. I snubbed Nobody... it my entire life, and now like I watch oh, no. people play it. I'm, I'm like, like, this looks fun. I know. I'm like dying to play Dungeons and Dragons, but nobody Uh-oh. I know plays it. You're blowing it, you nerd gum lately. Yeah, You're blowing yeah. it. I'm a nerd. <laughs> hold on, hold I, on. I'm the fir- I'm, I, I will be the first to admit it. I am a total, absolute. Tell, fucking talk nerd. about being a nerd, and I'll be right back. All right. Okay. No, I, I, I got to do something with the camera, but you... Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 all, right, right, all right, all right. All right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, yeah. I'm, like, I've been dying to play Dungeons no, no, and Dragons. Me, I wanted me, to play me it for too. so long. Like, okay, so, um, so watching... Uh, watching uh, um, blank on his fucking name. The guy does Rick and Morty. Uh, oh, um, um, Justin Justin Roland or Dan Harmon? Dan Harmon. Okay. So Dan Harmon had this, uh, like, okay, so basically Dan Harmon, like, brought this guy up. He has this, he has this, uh, uh, show i forget the name i think it's a kill tony or some some shit right. uh-huh. uh and basically like they do this like 
live action show. And he met this like dungeon master kid who's like mm-hmm. a total nerd who lives with his mom, uh-huh. which is not a bad thing. No. And literally, like, he created this show. Like, he just brought a dungeon master on and just watching him fucking do his thing. I'm just like, Jesus Christ. Like, this is a level of creativity and like, like, I, dude, I was an actor for years. Mm-hmm. I used to do improv, yeah. you know? Like, I used to do all this stuff. Now mm-hmm. I do stand-up, and the reason I do stand-up now is because I don't like to work out, you know? Like, <laughs> it's the it's re- re- that you actually do stand-up. I'm all personality <laughs> now, you know? Like, yeah. I got tired of, of bowing down to the corporate lords that told me I have to look a certain way or whatever. Yeah. You know, I had a baby face with no beard. You still and have was, a baby face. And I was six fucking two. And two. <laughs> 2006 when Tom so, Cruise was running so, shit. So, so how tall like, are you now then? I'm six foot three. <laughs> I haven't shrank. I, I, I'm wearing flats too. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 that, 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 that's it. I, I got one more. I got one more inch before I fucking turned like 30, and that was it. But <laughs> no, like, like I, 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 I. Okay, so you want to talk about nerds? Are right? you want to talk about directors? Yeah. Nerdy directors. Nerdy directors. All right, let's talk about John Waters. Oh, I, my hold God. On, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because the, the second you said that fucking Tommy Wiseau is like your favorite director, kidding, I was like, I was of like, course. yo, excuse me, but John Waters is literally the man. And don't take this. The coolest wrong, man alive. The man. coolest oh man my alive. God, he's he owns so the great. Leftorium and the Simpsons. And don't take this the wrong way. Literally, I was looking at you and I was like, he reminds me of fucking Divine. Like, without the makeup, without the makeup, don't take this I, the I, wrong I way. I take that as the highest of compliment. Yeah, you, you, okay, I good. hope, I hope yeah. so. Because, like, literally, Divine... It, okay, I'm a straight fucking male that grew up in the fucking 80s and 90s, okay? Mm-hmm. I am not supposed to like John Waters, okay? I absolutely... You've jerked, you've jerked off to Divine before. No, I've never jerked off to Divine before. <laughs> okay, I thought this is where no, it was going. Just, uh, yeah, just, a, big fa- going just yeah. a big fan of of, of her freedom yes. and, what yeah. she, and what she understood and what she stood for. Mm-hmm. I, I think she was a beacon for people that weren't there. And I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm a scumbag. I've already disclosed that to everybody. Yeah. And I say horrible shit all the time, okay? Right. Mm-hmm. All the fucking time. But I don't have one bad bad things to say about Divine. Divine owned her fucking time and place. Yep. She was a goddamn fucking rock star yep. and did it incredibly. Oh, like yeah. it, it it took it took a Johnny Depp movie to get me into into John Waters. I saw Cry Baby. I saw Cry Baby and was like just enthralled. I was like, "Oh my, who are all these people?" Like you know, I mean, let's let's talk about Lorraine or the yeah. the one chick who ran over somebody and is in jail now, but uh you know that, right? Locaine, Amy Locaine. Oh, yeah, Amy Locaine. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she, she just got out, though. Did she? Yeah. yeah. Congratulations, Amy. Yeah. It's but a trumped up charge. Waters, right? Yeah, I met John Waters. Oh, my yeah. God. I'm you so jealous. I met him at uh, Book Soup. Um, he was doing a signing up at Book Soup just down the street. And yeah. uh, I bought his book, and I grabbed two friends, and I was like, we're going to meet jo- fucking John Waters. That's awesome. And um, I'd met him, like, a month before I started growing out my beard, but, like, I went to this signing and I waited in line for like three hours and I finally got to meet John Waters and the first thing he said to me was like have you heard of this bearded lady and I was just like no I haven't and he goes you should really look into her and like she like you know had like a restaurant and she like basically owned like half this town and like was super cool and he goes but I totally love your look I love that you have like full face of makeup and a beard you should be doing like ad campaigns you should be like modeling I want to see you on the front page of like magazines and I was just like thank you prophetic yeah and and he goes he goes you know out of everybody that came here tonight like you win you're the winner and I was just like John Waters and I hand him my Odorama card that I grabbed out of my dad I grabbed out of my dad's laser disc of polyester and I like brought that to get him to sign it for my dad and he was just like you're too young to know what this is Uh. and I was just like no I have to tell you a story so the minute I turned 17 my dad goes you want to start watching NC-17 movies and I was like yes please and he goes "All right, so watch your beard first watch Pink Flamingos He goes, watch Pink Flamingos. I watched it. My mom was so mad at him that that he let me watch that movie. And he was just like, she's 17. I can't change it. That's cool. The the sad part about it, though, now that the world has caught up with John Waters... He can't get a movie made. I know. That that's that's fucking terrible. But but hold on. We're in Trump's America right now, okay? 
Mm-hmm. Let let's let this time pass. This this time is a, this time right That's now. That's why he's doing stand up and he's doing books. Well, and well then I, yeah. the second I get something going along, I'm gonna like totally reach out to him and make sure that he's a part of it. I, yeah. uh, John, I'd love to rape your fan base and more importantly, <laughs> give you work as well. Okay, like either either way, I like. That Simpsons episode is probably my favorite Simpsons episode. Right. Besides the monorail people. episode, which is everybody's right. favorite. But, like, that episode is fucking incredible. Like, literally, anytime I'm turning a corner with anything in my hands, I go, hot stuff coming through. <laughs> like, every time. Nobody gets the reference. I've done it a million times. Oh, I actually got kicked off of a... I got kicked off of a... a uh, like a production shoot that I was working on because I was carrying like dolly rails right. and you're supposed to say hot points when you come around the right, corner. Right, right. And I would, the entire day I was like, hot points coming through. <laughs> and some gay producer heard it was like, fuck that guy, fire him. And I was just, and I got fired. Wow. Yeah. As John, as Waters. Herbert, John Waters got you fired. Hey, hey, it's okay, Johnny. Yeah. It's all right. all right. Trust me. You, you, well, you got me through some awkward years when I was a kid. Well, where does the time go? I told you it goes by so quick. All right, we are already done no 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 you would think that would be enough <laughs> is this is this like where we fight to the death no no the the, three continue the next dakota has got a couple things going on i do have i'm a gonna be over here because i want to make sure the camera gets it yeah, yeah definitely all right so i've got two things to show you guys actually um the first one is something that i love to do it's called the human blockhead and I'm actually going to do it a little bit differently. Most time when you see a human blockhead, you think, oh, like they're going to hammer a nail into their nose, which is what the human blockhead is. But I like mm-hmm. to do things differently. Um, so I have with me a pair of hair cutting scissors. Are you cutting my tongue? No, I'm okay. going to put these scissors directly into the center of my head. <gasps> Shit. But wait, there's more. Oh. And then she licks it. Oh Gotta my keep my God. tools clean. Gotta keep that my tools clean. That was fucking. That was hot. That was hot. <laughs> um, that was, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and then the second thing that I have to show you guys is um, this mouse trap. Um, I oh, bought no. it at Home Depot, and it's covered in lipstick. Okay. Um, <laughs> now that? that's I'm gonna tell you why that is. So. Shit right there. So because of, like, my, my – I told you I have, like, an adrenal gland issue. Um, because I have too much adrenaline, uh, I don't feel pain the same way that everybody else does. So it takes about two pounds of pressure to break the spine of a mouse, killing it instantly. I'm going to take those life-ending two pounds of pressure, and I'm going to apply them directly to my tongue. Go. Ready? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Ow. Oh! Oh! Come on, give her a applause. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank awesome. you. So Holy it's actually shit. funny. Um, I don't know how much like YouTube you guys watch, um, but I'm like super obsessed with um Shane Dawson. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's doing this whole docuseries about Jake Paul right now. And like in part five, which he just released like on Monday, they went to like Jake Paul's house and like one of the guys Who's Jake Paul. He's a YouTuber. Yeah. Is he that <laughs> douchebag that found the ghosts in Japan and then pissed off the entire country of Japan? <laughs> no, that's his brother. Oh, OK. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, uh, Jake Paul used to be on like some Disney Channel show and um, he's like one of the most hated people on YouTube and stuff. Really? Um, Why? Was oh, just like, gotta, you got to be whole, a fucking real that asshole is a whole to be hated. Other he's episode. a pretty boy. And a dude. That's uh, a whole other that episode. Basically, you at 19, if that there was, was YouTube. That was Logan. That was oh, his I, brother. I, I, was, I was the most but, gentle, so, pretty You at 19, person. if there was YouTube, you would be on YouTube. Yeah, but so, I would not so, have. Um, wouldn't be able to figure so it out. So one of like Jake's <laughs> friends who lives at his house, he like snapped a mouse trap on his tongue, and like it super made me cringe because he did it wrong. So... Like there, there was a really high chance of him actually knocking his front teeth out the way that he did it. So you guys saw the way that I do it is I hold the mouse trap against my chin uh-huh. and I just put my yeah, tongue yeah. over it and yeah, let it snap the... that way, or else the bar will hit the front of your teeth. That makes and sense. like it, I was like, I watched that on Monday and I was cringing like so hard, just like, oh my god, you're gonna knock your damn teeth out! You're gonna knock your damn teeth out! He didn't, but like. I have to say, like, I do not recommend doing this. Yeah. Um, Train professional but, here, people. But if you have to snap your, to- snap your tongue with a mousetrap, 
make sure you press the wood of the mousetrap directly against your chin and like stick your tongue out over it like kiss. You know, like Gene Simmons does. Mm-hmm. He like sticks his tongue out like that. You stick out your tongue like Gene Same Simmons, thing for a blowjob, kids. And then kids. snap it. I yes. mean, I don't know what kind of blowjobs you're getting. Right? Giving, Vicious but, like, well, 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 those sound really uncomfortable. The wood goes right up against the bottom of it. Goes against the bottom of the lip, like uh-huh. you said. Uh huh. And then, and then you you oh, make sure you open your mouth uh-huh. so you don't get the teeth in the way. You don't right, want right. any teeth. Yeah, yeah. Well, the night is, the night is young, and Hannah and Brandon just met. So, so there uh, you go. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen later on. What made you do the scissors versus anything else? Um, so I started with a hammer and nail, and that was just like super predictable. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Everybody, you know, does scissors and nail, or everybody does nails, and so right. I work at Beetle House on Hollywood Boulevard. So I actually do two things at Beetle House. I do a spoon, which my like joke with that is, you know how they say some people are born with a silver spoon in their mouths? Yeah. Well, I just got to do everything different. Um, and then a friend of mine like mentioned, he was just like, hey, like you should do scissors instead of like a nail. Because like uh-huh. the nail's just like, too, it's just like everybody does it. So right. I started doing the scissors. So I, I bought a pair of hair cutting scissors and I started doing that because like I'd see. How ironic. Yeah, I'd nose see- hair cutting <laughs> scissors. <laughs> And they are sharp. Yeah. They are extremely yeah. sharp. Um, you know, I, I when I do my walk around at Beetle House, I like have like a little like notebook paper, and I like have people like give it a little cut just to like yeah. prove that it's real. And I like I have this whole spiel that I give them, and like you know I, I get them like really stressed out, and like they're like, oh yeah. god, I'm gonna be like sticking scissors into her face, and then I'm like, all right, so then give this piece of paper a cut, and they're just like. What? <laughs> oh my God! What am I doing? That's awesome. Paper? And I'm just like, yeah, paper. Just cut the paper. Yeah. Okay. They <laughs> cut the paper, and then I take the scissor and I stick it in my face, and they're just like, I'm so confused. Yes. It's great. It's I love fun. it. I just I love seeing people's faces yeah. when but, I do that uh, stuff. It's so much fun. I'll definitely have to come down to Beetle House and see yeah, you. totally. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Well, and, uh, well, this show has been a lot of fun. It yeah, has been a lot of fun. fun. It's a great, it's a great show. Now, uh, Brandon, how do people get a hold of you? And uh, tell us about any comedy shows going on. You're going to be on Netflix soon as part of uh, Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. As soon as they get done editing White and whatever. The White show. Trash Comedy Tour, that is correct. Uh, we were going to get a tour out of it, too. So we're going to like travel around a little bit, hit the road, which right. is super Fine. cool. It's like, it's uh, like the Blue Collar Comedy Tour at Better Pots. Uh, yeah, and, <laughs> and, and, and on top of it, we're just like funnier you know like we're not like just talking about being rednecks we actually have like comedy that that (laughs) leaves part of those shows us our friend yeah. Liam B. So well, we, we all we all represent like a different kind of white trash. That was the whole point of right. the show. Huh. And what's so your, like what's Liam, your white trash? Liam, yeah, your white Liam's trash? like biker white trash. Right. And then we had a kid named Anthony Davis who was like country white trash. His yeah. whole bits on like fuck it or his sister being a fucking. I know. I know. I stri- yeah. All right. Yeah. So so there's Anthony. Then there's Pache, who's gay white trash. I'm white urban trash. I'm I'm oh, white trash okay. from like the city, you know. Like I own guns, but I also support Roe vs Wade. You know, the Latinas are fertile. You know, like you gotta have the escape plan ready to go. You know, I'm, I'm totally. I'm, I'm a little more progressive, but still a little more back there. You know. So uh, I I don't think you have a website because I was looking, but you have Instagram, you uh, got Facebook. I, yeah, I got the Instagram. Uh, Instagram's uh, B Money was here. Uh, you can just search me on uh, on Facebook as Brandon Brocato. Uh, check- or Tinder. Uh, yeah, if you, if, you get, if you get so lucky, you know, like I I, I usually just who's super liked who. I, I erase. Uh, we, we just liked each other. Yeah. I don't I don't really super like. I don't like doing that. Really, yeah. to tell you the okay. truth, and really like. I really don't even use Tinder very often. <laughs> like, like I have everybody haven't. says that. I no, I no, learned. You don't. It's like when you're bored. Yeah, you're. Yeah, you, you like look at it. You're like, you're like, you're like, all right, I, I guess Bumble. whatever. We're, we're bored. See, I don't do Bumble. Hours I'm day, not. Right? I'm not hot enough for Bumble. Like, I get no. <laughs> I get nothing oh my on God, Bumble. No, People match with up. me all the time yeah. on Bumble, and then as soon as I send them a message, because a girl has to send the first message yeah. on Bumble, as soon as I send them a message, they fucking unmatch me, and I'm just like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, that's rude. Rude. And it you know is. what's rude? Bumble. Okay, and so is Tinder. All right. Listen, people. Okay, go out and fucking just be yourself in public. You'll run into somebody that wants to fucking lick parts of you. Okay. <laughs> but we don't want them to lick parts of us. Usually, it's like go away. Oh, no, 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 we, no, we no, do. I, we do. I know that. Who want to three of three of four people that you so want to. Exactly. So that's Brandon Bracato. B R O C A T O. Yeah, yeah, bro, cat o, bro, cat o. And Dakota, how do people get a hold of you? Uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, 
all at Dakota's Beard. Um, you can find my Facebook fan page, da- facebook.com forward slash Dakota's Beard, Instagram, Dakota's Beard, Twitter, Dakota's Beard. You are going to be able to find me on YouTube soon at Dakota's Beard. Yay. Yeah, I'm working on that, getting onto the platform, finally like trying to get it my self out there and everything so uh, i subscribe to that channel yeah it's gonna be fun yeah it's gonna be a fun one so um a lot of vlogging i can imagine (laughs) yeah it's gonna be great Um, i'm gonna be like showing like i uh i bought those snapchat glasses that like record things so i'm like figuring out how to like download the videos from the glasses onto my computer so that i can use that like the ugliest glasses in the history of the world they're so ugly but i love them so much i just love ugly things like fair enough so great fair enough so well uh yeah well, it's no wonder you're on my show. But Aww. anyway, <laughs> and then there's Kale Hannah Bach on all social media. B a k k, not B a c h, and it's pronounced Bach, not back. Did I say back? People. I said Bach. 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 <laughs> and Goth can be on all social media. I wish we could stay. We're gonna have both of you back soon. Yes, we. Are. Everybody yes. have a wonderfully creepy yes. week. Bye. 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 All right. Oh.